So good morning, everybody. This is Linda Ray from Real Estate One, right here in downtown Rochester on Main Street and beyond. And I have none other than Joe Beagleman on uh, Zoom with me today. My favorite loan officer. Hi, Joe. Hi, Linda. Good morning. Hey, good morning. It is a good morning. The sun is shining and things are going to go good. Um, listen, I want to have a chat with you um, as a table talk, basically about what's going on in the market and also to agents about how to win a bidding war. I'm sure that you see that a lot right now, right? I sure do. Absolutely. So I want to start with you. I'm going to ask you the expert. Uh, Joe's, I've been with Joe from uh, John Adams Mortgage, working with him for years, and um, I just can't say enough for him. So Joe, I'm going to have you to kind of bring us up to speed of what's going on this very minute in the real estate business and what should buyers and sellers know? Well, for sellers, it's the best time to be a seller maybe ever. So values are up. It's a seller's market, very low inventory. Uh, you basically have people beating down your doors to buy your house. So uh, being a seller is kind of the key right now. Conversely, being a buyer is a little more difficult. Uh, since there's multiple offers on each home and those multiple offers, you know, the, the, the effect of that is the price goes up. Uh, yes. it, makes, it makes it difficult to get an accepted offer. So the big question is, what do we do to put ourselves ahead of the competition? And we have a lot of different strategies for that. Let's talk about a few of those. I want to go back just for a second about what you said at sellers. And of course, we all know the houses are flying off the shelf. But it appears to be much easier than what it looks. Um, just because they are selling fast doesn't mean a seller shouldn't make sure they have their ducks in a row with the right agent and uh, the right loan officers out there to, to be able to handle the loan. Because a lot, a lot of things can go wrong when you have multiple offer status, too. People that overshoot the price, get buyer's remorse, those kinds of things. So having a superior agent at this time that charges you no extra money for that service and that knowledge is very important, do you think? I do, I do. And, and what I'm seeing too, Linda, that, that sellers and listing agents have to be really careful of is because there's so many buyers putting these offers in, some of these pre-approvals are not what they may appear to be. And what Absolutely. I mean by that is, you know, you may think that somebody's got 20% down based upon their purchase agreement or 30% down based upon their purchase agreement. But what I'm seeing is when once we dive into those pre-approval letters and really look at what that buyer has, maybe they're putting down 5% or 3%, but trying to make themselves look stronger with a 20% mm -hmm. down or 30% down purchase agreement. So yes. you have a realtor that knows the ins and outs of who the lender is, the way to look at those pre-approvals, call the lenders, really talk to them see if what the other realtor put on there is legitimate is really important. Well, I've also, <clears throat> excuse me, I've also ran into a problem where <clears throat> I'd received some cash offers from some agents that I don't know if the ethics is that good, but they had never intended to go cash in the first place. Um, of course, we ask them to submit the, the funds and they do, but then they take the, uh, the house and then get rid of the other buyers and then they convert it to a mortgage anyway, which throws the seller's time frame off from kilter. So they need to be really aware of that as well. Uh, I know that you have to have an addendum to switch it from cash to a mortgage, but when, when you've already let all the other buyers go, it puts a seller in kind of an awkward position. One of the things that you just said brings me to a point of, about the good to go approval from John Adams. Yeah, yeah one of the best ways to to help differentiate yourself from the competition is not just getting a pre-approval, but getting fully approved. And we don't charge for that at John Adams Mortgage. We'll do all the work up front, get them mm -hmm. fully approved through underwriting. That means that a buyer is submitting their income, their assets, we've pulled their credit, we've run them through our automated system and then submitted them to actual underwriting and gotten a full approval on a to be determined property. What that does is when they actually find a home that they want, we shrink down the time period from getting them from accepted offer to closing because we've already done all the work up front. And what it also does is I can call the listing realtor and say that this buyer has already been through underwriting. This is not just a pre-approval, it's a full approval. We've already verified everything. You're not gonna have any problems with this buyer. That is a big differentiator. It is. 
let me let me insert this too. A lot of times, what he what he just said is so important because a lot of times loan officers won't even take my call to verify. And here yet, Joe's not only taking calls; he's making them. Yeah, that's right. He makes the call to the realtor because I think that that's what you have to make sure that you have in a loan officer. I know when I get multiple offers, I start looking at for the seller. Uh, the stability of the agent, the company, the loan officer, because there are so many off the wall companies today that I then I'm able to share with them that this is my opinion because it's a proven record. So it really makes a difference who your agent is and their rapport with the other agents in town as well. And yeah, uh, I, I, I agree, yeah. Linda, you know, we, we've both been in this industry for a long time, you know, I'm yeah. going on 22 years and in this specific market for going on about 19 years uh, mm -hmm. and one of the top producers. And, and I know you're one of the top producers in the state of Michigan. Uh, so when we deal with these other, you know, when, when my offer or our offer goes in to a listing agent, we've probably done business with that person. And if we haven't done business with that person, you know, that's kind of a surprise. So when we make that call, you know, to, to the listing agent and the seller and say, Hey, this buyer's already done this, this, and this, and they're this well qualified, there's that relationship and that rapport already established. It really goes Absolutely. a long way just to give them that a, a little bit ahead the competition again. You know, what can we do to just help a little bit because those little differences matter? Well, I think it's more than a little bit. I think it's a really big weight to me. Uh, it's so it's so hard to look at somebody that to, has 14 offers and lets uh, 13 of them go and pick the wrong one. And that, that stability, I know you're not going to give me heads up on a buyer that's not good. It's not going to happen. Right. And yeah, I'm not you're going to gonna... do that to my reputation. Yes, you're going to do your homework before it because we've built this block for a long time, as you say, and uh, we're trusted and preferred by the local agents. So when an outsider comes in, you don't know them. You don't know what they're like. And they're not really building the community either. So they don't have a whole lot to lose if they screw up, I guess. But uh, let's go on with some of the other uh, things that you are talking about on how to win a bidding war. You've got a really good list and so do we, but I'd like to hear your side of uh, what you are saying to agents to get this offer really weighted. Well, you know, you know, one thing that I love about what you guys do so much on your team is, you know, you'll talk to that listing agent and make sure that the buyer is offering what that seller wants, right? Is it more occupancy? Is it uh, is it all price? Is it an appraisal guarantee? You know, you guys really figure that out for the clients, which is so huge yes. and important. Yes. You know, from a financing perspective, what I'm seeing the most are appraisal guarantees. And what, yes. what, why that's so important right now is because as the values increase so quickly, the appraisers can't keep up with that appreciation as quick as people are overpaying for these houses to win the bidding wars. Mm -hmm. So and actually, appraisals are most often coming in, but the sellers want that appraisal guarantee. So if if a buyer can say, "Hey, we're willing to pay five thousand over the appraisal value if it should come in low, or ten thousand, or waive it completely," that gives them a, a huge upper hand. And mm -hmm. one thing that we do a lot, Linda, is, you know, let's say somebody's putting down ten percent down. Mm -hmm. Well, we can change their down payment to five percent down and give them the ability to pay. 5% over the appraisal value, you know, mm -hmm. so they, in essence, have the same amount of funds coming out of pocket, you know, mm -hmm. so we just changed their financing a little bit. I had a client that was putting 20% down on a $450,000 home, yes. and they were losing out because they didn't have the ability to do more than 20% down. So I said, hey, listen, why don't we switch this to 15%, down, give you the 5% extra to pay over the appraisal value. And mm -hmm. they said, you know, we don't want to pay PMI. PMI so expensive. I ran the numbers for them. They had really great credit, really great situation. Their PMI in a $450,000 home with 15% down was only $41 a month. So they Plus said, it'll oh go my God. away eventually. It'll go away anyway. Well, yeah, especially right? with 15% down, it goes away in a few years. So, mm -hmm. you know, that $41 a month, they were willing to pay because they needed to make themselves competitive in such a competitive market. And lo and behold, they got an accepted offer because they were willing to guarantee a little bit of the appraisal. So, so important right now. Yeah, it is. And so if you're working against an agent or a loan officer has all this working knowledge, you're never, you're going to continue to lose the home if your agent isn't seasoned enough to understand this. So let's go on with some other things about the appraisals too. 
how do you how how does the appraisal work into the seller's incentives and so forth? Yeah, well, you know, uh, appraisals in general, you know, they're, they're they're most often most often an appraiser will bring a value in at what the true test of market value is. And that's what somebody's willing to pay for the home and what somebody's willing to receive. So the appraiser is going to do their best. They have the contract to bring the value in. But mm -hmm. if the sales don't support it, you know, on a seller's side, you know, they can accept the highest offer they want. But when that appraisal comes in, if it doesn't support where that price is, you know, they're going to end up renegotiating their, their sales price. Or, or the deal buyer, dies. Yeah, or the deal dies. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, so, so you have let's, to be careful. Let's also throw in there at the same time about the inspections of the homes. How does that play into making sure that you can wait your, your offer? Well, an inspection is one of the most important parts of buying a home. So you got to make sure that the house is in great shape and, and in good mm -hmm. enough shape that, that you want to buy it. And uh, when you have the inspection, if you find items that need to be repaired, you could always ask for a price reduction or you could ask the seller to contribute money towards your closing costs. Uh, mm -hmm. There's there's a couple different opportunities there to to kind of renegotiate. Um, One of the things that we're offering uh, big time, Joe and I started about two years ago, is um, have a we list heavily too, so we have a great inventory all the time. With seven of us, we've always got something coming in, but uh, in great buyer agents at the same time. But we do pre inspections, mm -hmm. and it's the top. I don't ever tell a buyer not to do their own inspection, but I think if the top 15 items in the home is pre-inspected, it's it lowers the risk of finding mold in the attic or some of the things that maybe the seller is not even aware of. And then it kills the deal at the end and everybody spent all this time and money and the pre-inspections really work. And we are offering that inspection to them to see, which would include, of course, the furnace, the attic and so on again, all the vital points. So that that buyer can be more assured that that house is going to pass an inspection when they do it. So that has been a very favorable thing too. So if you look for the Linda Ray team listings out there, you're going to find that we have pre-inspections on every single one of them first. Now, if they find something, yes, they have to disclose it. And yes, they fix it and disclose it properly. But at least you're aware before you go in there and start spinning your wheels with a house offer in dollars for inspections and, uh, and, and the loan officer. What else on seller's incentives can we do to get an offer accepted? Occupancy? Well, yeah, yeah. You know, if, if the seller wants to stay in there longer, you could always offer free occupancy. Um, you could, you know, give them a longer period of time to stay there. But just remember, there's a caveat to it. If the buyer is buying a primary residence, then the max occupancy is 60 days for a seller mm -hmm. uh, to stay mm -hmm. in the house after closing or it turns But that's into plenty. Investment. That's a lot. Yeah. 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 That's a lot. Yeah. And, yeah. and then one of the things that, you know, the, the old school thinking of a pre-approval letter would be to match a pre-approval letter price to whatever mm -hmm. the client's offering. But yes. a new way to look at that is, you know, if, if you're buying a house for $400,000, but you're approved for six or $700,000, to write the pre-approval letter for what you're actually approved for. Because what that shows the seller, if they're looking at 10 different offers and all the other approval letters are around 400,000, but they see your pre-approval letter at 700,000, maybe they want to work with you. You'd rather them want to work with you because you're so well qualified yes. than maybe work with somebody that's just barely getting into the home. So show them your strength. You know, so your strength in old school, they were afraid to do that because they thought the seller would see that they could afford more. But that in this case, that is a plus to you to, to show your strength. Doesn't mean you're going to spend it, but you are you have the capability. I, I agree with yeah. that one really good. So an acceleration clause also could work. Is that what you're saying as well? Yeah, acceleration clauses are, are great too. And what that is is you know, you you say that you're going to match any other offer up to a certain point. You know, and, and you know, so let's say it's a four hundred thousand dollar purchase price that you've offered, but you'll go up to four fifteen to match any other offer if an offer comes in that high. That just mm -hmm. says to the seller and listing agent, "Hey, our offer is anywhere between four hundred and four fifteen, as long mm -hmm. as there's another offer that you can show us that is coming higher." And you can still cap it so that it doesn't mean they can go to the sky. But um, I think that's really good for them. I also, earnest money. How important is that? I think earnest money is very important, especially in, you know, depending on where the price range is, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. once a, a, a buyer puts a certain deposit down, it shows they're serious about the home. So if you can mm -hmm. get more of an earnest money deposit, you know that the, 
the buyer serious about it. To protect the buyer end of that is there's usually a financing contingency associated with the contract. If the financing doesn't work out for some reason, you usually would get your earnest money deposit back. Uh, so it, it kind of works both ways. It, it shows strength and there's protection. So for the seller, I see two things that happens for a buyer that can show their, when I ask them if they're willing to guarantee the appraisal sum, I do that for a reason. It's not just because it's nice to have 3,000, 5,000, a blank check or whatever, in case the appraisal comes back short, if pushing the price too high and uh, they're willing to do that. But I think that it shows the strength of the buyer, whether they really want the house bad enough to fight through the inspections and so forth to get it. If they put their hand down and don't even want to guarantee it any at all, they're the kind to me that's sitting there praying that the appraisal comes back short. So that shows you that that buyer might not be your buyer. Right. Yeah. So what other things are you sharing with us today about the advantages of these incentives and appraisals? You got something else? Well, you know, I, I think using a local lender like we were talking about at the beginning is important because, you know, if you picture yourself in a seller's shoes or as a listing agent, if they don't mm -hmm. know who the lender is, if they haven't experienced working with them before, if they're mm -hmm. out of state, if they're, you know, a large company that, that if they don't know the loan officer, there's not that rapport to have that conversation. So I think local is so important on that. Um, we have some great financing, you know, uh, incentives for buyers. So, you know, first of all, one is if a client lists with a real estate one or Max Brook realtor, uh, mm -hmm. They actually get a thousand dollars of a discount off their closing costs on a mortgage if they buy through, you know, Real Estate One, Max Brook, or mm -hmm. with John Adams Mortgage. So on that's their a next home, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a thousand dollars off their closing costs. Our our mortgage fee is only a thousand dollars and a thousand ninety dollars. So that almost wipes out our whole mortgage fee right there, uh, which is okay. a great incentive. And mm -hmm. then we have nice incentives for for our frontline workers, you know, firefighters, teachers. Uh, police, police officers, you know, we have a nice credit for them of $500 off their closing costs as a thank you for what they do. Uh, military personnel, um, that's a great incentive as well. Uh, that's you know, a great the, thing, yeah. That's a yeah, great thing. And, and, and you know what? At the end of the day, we're going to be really competitive with our rates and costs. I think everybody mm -hmm. would be happy with that. But just as important, we're going to find the right program for the customer because that's really important. What their down payment is, what the term is, you know, how we structure the program. And then we're going to do the extra things that we've been talking about on this episode is really put them in the best position to succeed with an accepted offer. So mm -hmm. all combined, a really nice service to our clients. There's also a Home Depot card given to somebody too, isn't there? The clients? Yeah, yeah. You're mentioning the second look program. So let's say yes. somebody's pre-approved mm -hmm. through another lender and they want to take a second look at us. We'll make sure we match or beat what that company's offering them offer mm -hmm. them the great service and they'll get a hundred dollar uh, Home Depot gift card. And if they decide to still use the other lender after talking to us, we'll still give them the hundred dollar Home Depot gift card. That's how confident we are that we can win them over. That's really good. Going back to the appraisal for a couple of things, I think there's two other things that we might not have touched on and that's actually you can have an appraisal waiver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an appraisal waiver happens when, uh, when a buyer is well qualified mm -hmm. and uh, the automated system runs a bunch of different algorithms on the area. It looks up what the values are through an automated valuation system. It looks up what the list price is. It looks up appraisals that have been entered into the system previously, and it comes up with an automated value. And if that automated value is in close enough range with what the sales price is, we can get what's called a property inspection waiver, where we actually don't have to have an appraisal. A buyer can still elect to have an appraisal if they want to, but we will approve their loan without an appraisal if we get that waiver, which is a really cool option. So even though we're having about 50% looking at deals with multiple offers, do you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, there's at least 50. Higher. Maybe higher, but even in the future, I think we're going to have that for quite a while. So it's really important that you have your ducks in a row. And um, one of the things with the appraiser too, that I know you and I have discussed this before, and that is to, when, when, when you see that multiple offers and you think, wow, but on the other hand, when you show the appraiser the multiple offers that was taken on the property, it really backs it up. Is that correct? Absolutely, Linda. That, that is so important because you're showing the appraiser what the market is saying about the house. Mm -hmm. 
you know, if you show them you have 15 offers on the house and here's all the, you know, where, where the prices fell, what, mm -hmm. what other support can you give that this house is worth what, you know, what they're marketing it at and what they accept and, for the sales price. And the listing agent should be willing to do that because that makes, ensures their appraisal that they're going to get paid on it as well. Absolutely. And I know your team does that all the time where you'll meet an appraiser at the home. You'll show yes. them why the sales price is what it is and the, the supporting documents, whether it's other offers or other sales in the area. You'll mm -hmm. show them if maybe there was some sale on the street that it was a total gut job and, and why they shouldn't use it in the appraisal. Um, mm -hmm. You guys know the market more than anybody. So you meeting the appraiser there and showing them why the value is what the value is, is vitally important. I know we have an appraisal this morning that's happening and one of the team members is there and bless her heart, she called even again last night, three times yesterday doing her homework and we had all those provisions made for her um, right down to the last improvement on the home. And we do that in our, our flyers. We always have the seller up front give us a list of all the upgrades they did to the home. Not only is it good for the buyer and the other agent that's never had that conversation uh, with the buyer, but it's also good for the appraiser just to leave it on the table for them when they walk in. That does a lot of their homework and helps them to know what it is. And it's also good for us to understand what the appraiser is looking for and where the value lies. So we're having a tremendous amount of listings coming in and what they're calling for is our expertise of coming in prior to that, some of them as far as a year back, where do I put my money? Where do I not put my money? How do I get my house ready and make sure that we're going to appraise at the highest possible dollar? So I know that you and I both are out here for all of those questions and answers for these people. Uh, so if they've got questions or want ideas from you, Joe, how do they reach you? Yeah, they always... Always available to help, of course. Uh, you mm -hmm. can reach me on my cell phone at 248-302-3652. You can email me at joe at johnadamsmortgage.com. Mm -hmm. Always available. And you're in several different offices and available at any time. I know I call him anytime, except for one hour a night. That's when you're reading to the kids, right? That's right. Right. <laughs> so we all know that one hour per night <laughs> leave joe and his kids alone uh, he's got a beautiful family i just love watching them um thank you so anything else you want to throw in there joe that that might help the buyers and the sellers that we might have missed no i just think that at the end of the day if you have experts working for you and putting you in the right chance to succeed it gives you a much better chance to succeed so absolutely and and that makes it not making it not only get the offer but not making a mistake yeah. not making a mistake and not perhaps not doing something that we could have had some great advice for you to do that would have made all the difference in the world and even the purchase right as absolutely. far as the realtors go you know we we do that and there's been many times that if they give us a list right up front of what they're looking for and what their goals are to reach. And you too, I've seen you take people that's really not prepared for a home yet either and work them for a good year to get them prepared. I love to give back and, and that's one of the best ways, getting somebody that's not approved to approval, getting somebody mm -hmm. that's approved to a better approval with a better program and a better mm -hmm. interest rate that they get. I love helping people. How about new construction loans and doctor's loans? Mm -hmm. So a, uh, a doctor's loan, you can do up to 100% financing in most situations with no private mortgage insurance. It's a wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful program for our physicians. Uh, we have the most competitive program around on that product. Um, mm -hmm. ha happy to help. Uh, on new construction, uh, you know, depending on how, how new construction goes, you know, it usually is one, or, one way or another where mm -hmm. either the builder is building a spec home, takes a deposit mm -hmm. from the buyer, and then we finance the home at the end of the process, similar to how you would buy a used home, that's the same type of loan. Or a construction loan would be where you found a lot, found the builder, or you're financing the construction through drawers. And, and that's a little bit uh, different of a program. We actually don't offer that program at the time, but if somebody's interested, I, I know enough about it to give them some recommendations. We have a tremendous amount of specs with the lack of inventory out here, our builders going absolutely bonkers getting specs up. And uh, I gotta tell you, we probably sold up to 10 houses in the last two weeks of uh, specs that were either 90 days out, 60 days out. 
just maybe the basement's been ordered and put them two months ahead. So remember that too, that new construction is always available and we have specs in several different areas and a new subdivision that's going to open up and that's uh, going to be over 300 homes in that one sub. We have a couple other subs as well. And they're gonna throw up specs really fast. That's what builders are gonna do when we have those hard to find ranch homes. So Joe, again, give that phone number where they can reach you. They can reach me anytime, 248-302-3652. And this is Linda Ray at Real Estate 1-248-709-3786. We love to inform you. We've got information anytime. Give us a call. We'll be more than willing to sit down and answer those questions for you. Make sure that you have a smooth move. Hope you have a really great day. Bye, Joe. And thanks for joining us today at Linda Ray's Table Talk. Always a pleasure. Thank you, hon.